Jackie Roosevelt Robinson was born on January 31, 1919 in Cairo, Georgia to Mally and Jerry Robinson. His parents divorced, which prompted Mally and her children to move to Pasadena, California, where she became a maid to take care of them. In 1935, Jackie went to John Muir High School, where he made a name for himself by excelling in many different sports just like his older brother Mac. These sports included basketball, baseball, track and field, football, and even tennis. After graduating in 1938, Jackie attended Pasadena Junior College where he continued to pursue athletics, mainly focusing on baseball, football, and track and field. He had many achievements, such as breaking the American Junior College record for broad jump that his older brother Mac previously held, with a jump of 25 feet and 6.5 and inches. He also was elected to be on the All-Southland Junior College team for baseball and selected as the region's most valuable player. Despite his excellence in sports, Jackie experienced racism firsthand. He received a two-week suspension from school after vocally disputing the detention of his African-American friend. This started Jackie's reputation of fighting racial discrimination. While attending Pasadena Junior College, Jackie's older and closest brother Frank died in a motorcycle accident. This combined with the school suspension motivated him to further his athletic career at the University of California, Los Angeles in 1939. Here, he went on to become their first student to win four letters in different sports. Jackie left UCLA shortly before graduation and took a job as an athletic director with the government's National Youth Administration, which seized shortly after. After this, he traveled to Hawaii where he briefly played semi-professional football for the Honolulu Bears in 1941. He left Hawaii just two days before the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and prompted World War II. In 1942, Jackie was drafted into the U.S. Army and assigned to the Segregated Army Cavalry Unit in Fort Riley. However, he was never able to battle due to an ankle injury. Even in the Army, Jackie always stood up for what he believed in. He was honorably discharged from the Army for refusing to sit in the back of the segregated military bus two years later. After his dismissal from the Army, Jackie set out on joining baseball's Negro Leagues and began playing for the Kansas City Monarchs. Although segregation prevented black people from playing in Major League Baseball, Branch Rickey, a general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, sought out to integrate black people into his team. After scouting the Negro Leagues for a person that could withstand the inevitable discrimination that came with the MLB, Branch chose Jackie after a three-hour long exchange. On October 23, 1945, it was announced that Jackie would sign with the Brooklyn Dodgers. This announcement received a wide range of reactions. While some expressed enthusiasm, others expressed hatred and disgust. Death threats were sent to Jackie and other MLB players threatened to go on strike to oppose playing against him. Jackie chose to ignore these negative responses and focus on his happiness. In 1946, Jackie married Rachel Isom, a woman he met during his time at UCLA. They ended up having three children together. On April 15, 1947, Jackie broke the color barrier and played his first game with the Dodgers as first baseman. He won the Rookie of the Year award for the 1947 season with a batting average of .297, 125 runs, and 29 stolen bases. During his time in the MLB, he won National League Most Valuable Player in 1949, played in the All-Star Game from 1949 to 1954, and played in six World Series, ending his career in 1957 with a batting average of .311, 137 home runs, 734 runs, and 197 stolen bases. Such success in the midst of jeers and slurs from the media, fans, players, and teammates inspired millions across the world. Jackie challenged the racial segregation rules in the MLB through his talent and lack of violence. Jackie Robinson was a very influential civil rights activist. After retiring, Jackie used his fame to gain support for the NAACP, which he became an active member of in 1957. This same year, Jackie became the first black vice president of a major American corporation, Chock Full of Nuts. He used his position to improve working conditions for their employees as they were predominantly black and gained $10,000 for the NAACP. A couple of years later, Jackie became a nationally syndicated columnist for the New York Post and New York Amsterdam News. Here he talked about social issues, 
sports, and family life, and he used his influence to encourage black people to use their voice and partake in politics and business. To continue, Jackie was a proud featured speaker at civil rights rallies, including the famous March on Washington in 1963, alongside Bayard Rustin, A. Philip Randolph, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He also helped establish the Freedom National Bank in 1964, which was an African-American-owned financial institution based in Harlem, New York. Its mission was to financially aid African-American communities. Adding to his long list of accomplishments, in 1965, Jackie became the first black television analyst of the MLB, only three years after being inducted into the Hall of Fame. He used this position to give more well-deserved recognition to black baseball players. To further aid fellow minorities, Jackie founded the Jackie Robinson Construction Company in 1970. This company was made to help aid low-income families by building them homes to stay in. After fighting a long battle with diabetes and heart disease, Jackie died from a heart attack in 1972 in the arms of his wife. Despite this tragedy, Jackie's legacy continued when that same year, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and Presidential Medal of Freedom. April 15, 2004 marks the beginning of a tradition known as Jackie Robinson Day, where every MLB player wears number 42 to remember and honor Jackie's remarkable contribution to the inclusivity of baseball and the civil rights movement. Thank you.